Every other place I've been to is a dingy old grimy workshop with sprint cars. Instead, I find the very glamorous <laughs> Sherry Hodnett sitting here in this nice little outdoor porch amongst all the ferns and the pretty flowers. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. It's great to see you. I thought I, I've been in Pennsylvania for a couple of days and I've been visiting all these legends and talking about PA racing. And I thought Greg has been on my mind a lot. Uh, and I thought I've just got to get to you and find out firstly, how are you doing these days? You know, I'm doing okay. Um, I'm here a lot. Yep. This is, you know, this is a huge part of my life, really. But, um, you know, I'm, I, I feel like I'm doing good. We just had our three-year mark. Yeah. You know, I can't believe it's been three years. Yeah. Since I've, since I've seen him or talked to him. But, about 12 um, days ago, 10 days ago, it was like yep. three years. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I've moved. I moved out of our house, moved into a condo, yep. and simplified my life. So that's been really good. Yep. I'm, I'm happy with that move. And, uh, you know, kind of just doing some things here at the salon, you know, kind of trying to grow the business a little bit. And so we've been doing a little bit of construction here. But, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's good. It's good. Um, so he was from Memphis, Tennessee. Moved out to Pennsylvania like a lot of race car drivers do because it's the place to be and the place to race. Mm -hmm and was looking for a haircut. <laughs> I love this story. <laughs> so there's a lot of, I've been, I must have passed 30 barbers between here and Gettysburg. <laughs> Seems like hairdressing's a big deal in Pennsylvania. There's a lot of hairdressers. And he picked yours. That's fate. Why did he pick yours? It was a recommendation, wasn't it? It was a recommendation. Um, I did Lee Stauffer's hair uh -huh. and uh, I'd done Lee's hair for a couple of years and Greg came to drive his the, the 12 car and needed a haircut. So he uh, asked Lee, hey, you know, I need a haircut. Where can I go? And Lee said, well, you got to go to my girl. She has a really nice ass. <laughs> and so that's how I landed Greg. And, it, you know, it was really kind of funny. I remember seeing him for the first time and thinking to myself, oh, my gosh, this guy is good looking. I really did not know what Greg did I really didn't know a lot about Lee and and what he did usually when Lee came in for a haircut we talked about all kinds of other things you know not yeah. not what he did but um I had cut Greg's hair uh, maybe once or twice I remember asking him why he doesn't have a southern accent if he's from Memphis yeah 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 that seems sketchy to me yeah I know right so uh <laughs> anyway then I wound up at one point, Lee came in and got a haircut, and I said, so where's that cute little driver of yours? And he said, well, you're not going to see him anymore. He left to go on the road, and with, and I don't even know if he said it was with the outlaws, but he was going to go travel yeah. and, and drive cars or whatever. So I said, well, that's, yeah, that's really a shame, because he was really cute. So probably about a year later, Greg called and made another appointment with me, and I remember saying to him, why are you back here? I thought you were off yeah doing what you do and he said well you know it, it didn't work out and so I'm back and um, it just kind of started from there so how long ago was that oh 20 years ago Wow probably it was about 20 years ago did you get any sense of any connection even in that short space of time that well at first no at first I thought he was a jerk I uh, <laughs> I remember going out into the waiting room one time and he was on the phone yeah. as he always is on that was always on that phone I used to say I think he needs that thing surgically implanted in his ear you know so uh, he was on the phone and I said hey you know I'm, uh, what's your, <laughs> your appointments next and he just stayed on the phone he didn't get off the phone oh. and I thought you know I'm not quite sure who this guy thinks he is but I have appointments to keep I'm a busy woman so yeah and uh, kind of kind of got a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth for him at that point because I thought, you know, he kind of thinks he is somebody. <laughs> so, clearly he wore you down. Clearly he wore me down. When, was it, when did he ask you out? And was it a decent line or was it a bit like, you know, we should just go out or oh, what? Oh, that's, that's another story. I don't, I don't know that that's... Okay. I don't know that that's... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, it worked. Let's just say that. Actually, you know what? We flipped double or nothing. Let's just say that. We flipped double or nothing. That's that's how that's what initially broke the ice. Okay. 
and uh, the rest is history. So, were you a race girl at all, Sherry? Like, did you have any? Not a bit. I think I went to the races one time when I was a kid because I was neighbors with Bobby Goodling, and I don't even know what Bobby Goodling even raced anymore, but I was friends with his daughter okay. and went to the races. Other than that, I'd never been to Lincoln Speedway in my life. Never never Lincoln, never the Grove, nothing. And, um, and Lincoln's only just down the road from here, right? Yeah. Yeah, it just wasn't something that I did. I mean, I'm a girl. You know? And a girly girl. And a girly girl. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, I wasn't going to a racetrack. <laughs> So no, I I didn't know anything about it, not a thing. What did you think when you went? Well, you know, it was honestly it was really a different world for me. Yeah. And you know the circumstances that I kind of was introduced there, it was a little bit tough. You know, like um, I was the new girl, yeah. and you know, so at first just felt very out of place, and you mm -hmm. know. But kind of figured out pretty early on that if I was going to have a relationship with a driver that I was going to have to yeah. kind of make my own way there a little bit because Greg certainly wasn't paying attention to me at a racetrack. F focused. <laughs> so very focused. Yeah. But, um, you know, and then as years went on, I mean, it definitely, you know, it definitely softened and met a lot of great, great yeah. people there and honestly really came to love it. You know, so uh, I remember at one point, Greg said it was I think it was Speed Week. And he said a lot of these people wind up saving their vacations all year long yep. to follow us around at these Speed Week shows. And I said, what are they nuts? These people are crazy. Like, don't they go to the beach? So uh, he always kind of got a chuckle out of that. You know, I always thought yeah. we should be going to the beach. We shouldn't be going to a racetrack every year. Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah. So did you did you were you able to balance that sort of part of his life then and and show him more of your you know did you go to Virginia Beach together did you do stuff that was not race related? We did. At first, he really didn't have an interest in doing that, but I think I pretty much pushed for hey you know if we're gonna yeah. if we're gonna be at a racetrack every Friday and Saturday night all summer long we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna do something in the off season. So we always, always planned a trip to somewhere, an all-inclusive somewhere, you know. Yeah. In fact, we wound up getting married in Cabo on the beach. Beautiful. So, yeah, you know, um, a lot of times after Knoxville, we would have all of our stuff ready in the car. So when the plane landed in, in uh, Harrisburg, we'd hop in our car and go to the beach and just chill out at the beach for a couple of days. And I think, you know, he really, he really learned to like that. You know, that was yeah. something that, you know, he always then started to really look forward to. So it was kind of cool because, you know, he kind of had to adjust to, you know, the things that I wanted and, and the things that I was accustomed to doing. Yeah. And I needed to adjust to to his life. And we did that. We did that pretty well. And we have had a couple of rough spots along the way, let me tell you. But, um, you know, we did that and it, it was good. Um, when this gal was a hairdresser and guys were coming to see her because she apparently she could cut hair as well did she ever dream that she'd be in places like Warrnambool Australia you know racing for the V88 team Maddie and Renee and you know traveling to the other side of the world no way no way and you know did you even think about Australia at any point no yeah I was gonna no, say that never thanks for that by the way yeah you know. I mean and it was an awesome place yeah but you know I remember uh Greg of course he had been so many places racing yes and he always wanted to show me places that he had been. Yeah. So uh, one time after Knoxville, we get in the car and he drove me. We had like a 24 hour period and he had driven me all the way out to Mount Rushmore. Wow. Just to yeah. go out to Mount Rushmore, see that, turn around, drive back like that night, we stopped at a hotel room, got like three hours of sleep, drove back in time to get on the plane and fly home. Uh -huh. So it was really important for him to see, for me to see places yeah. that he had been. He he had me out in California. He had me up to Mount Rainier State Park and down through uh, yep. San Francisco and Napa Valley. And I mean, you know, he had been all over and he wanted to make sure that I saw those places too. 
and Australia was a place that his mom had always wanted to go and probably because of racing yeah. you know she knew about that and he always thought that I yeah. would think Australia was pretty cool too so just by total happenstance like it's crazy sometimes you know how things happen um he had talked about it and then roger johnson uh-huh uh, yeah. talked to him and said hey you know oh might have a ride for you in australia and uh i remember greg came home and he said hey we're going to australia and i said oh no. <laughs> no, no i'm not going to australia and he's like oh yeah you are and i said uh I think I can do that. That's like, that's like a twenty-hour plane ride. Yes. I can't get on a plane and fly for twenty hours. And he said, "Yeah, you can, and you're going to." Oh, so um, he was pretty adamant. So that's how his mom and I got to go, basically, because you yeah. know Greg wanted to make sure that we saw Australia, and you know when we were there, I mean, we made a vacation out of that. And it was it was awesome. Beautiful I mean, beaches, huh? Oh my gosh! When you just said Virginia, I'm gonna say, oh, I reckon uh -huh. our beaches in Australia are better than that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, that was that was that was really probably the most memorable trip that we had together, and we we've, we've been on we've been on quite a few. Yeah, you yeah. have. So um, yeah. Tell me about your beautiful family. So I have. Uh, three kids mm -hmm. I have a daughter I she uh, Ashley has just turned 33 and she does hair also nice I uh, have an older son David he had just turned 36 yep and David has a business of his own doing construction that type thing and then I have <clears throat> excuse me I have a younger son Jeremy who is in the military okay and he right now is over in Germany Wow yep how's that for you uh, well, that's always tough. Yeah. You know, that's always tough when he, he joined the Air Force and, you know, he was the baby. So, yeah. you know, that was a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of crying myself to sleep when he left for basic training. Yeah. And, yeah, that was that was a tough, tough thing. But uh, five grown kids. Wow. And basically everybody's around here. Everybody's real close. My son lives right here Good. at the house. And uh, my son and his wife. So, you know, I, I get to, I get to FaceTime with Jeremy. So Good. that's really cool. Good. But yeah. So given that you weren't a race girl when you met him and you certainly are a race person these days, sorry, but we adopted you. <laughs> um, do you have a, um, an understanding perhaps of the, the long, long lasting impact that Greg has had on our sport? And I say our sport in Australia, he's very well known. And he's certainly, you know, a massive part of Pennsylvania and American sprint car culture. Do you get a sense of that even, you know, in the, in the last three years? Do you understand how much people revered and loved him? Oh, my goodness. It's, you know, I mean, even now, you know, people still come up, talk to me, tell me stories about Greg, you know, tell me how much he's missed. Yeah. Um, you know, people, I mean, that... That is very, very heartwarming to me to know that, you know, on the anniversary of his death, I mean, Facebook, just my Facebook page, you know, yeah. pretty much blows up with pictures and, yeah. and um, you know, it's funny. I, I don't think, I don't think Greg ever really knew to what caliber mm -hmm. he was liked and respected I don't think he knew that I certainly didn't know that you know I mean we mm -hmm. just went right. to the races and yeah. you know of course you know you, you have your fan base and I got to talk with the fans more than he did really you know because yeah. I was the one that sold the t-shirts um and you know how that goes I mean some people love him some people hate him you know yeah but I had I had absolutely no idea uh, but it's it's pretty incredible, you know. I think he's definitely yeah. left his mark on this world. Oh, without any doubt. I think about you and I think about Bobby a lot, Bobby Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how much you two have have connected in you know in all that time anyway. But was there a period there where you felt 
not you, not you hated our sport or the sport, but did it did it robbed you, or was that a you know it's a hard thing to quantify? How did you feel about sprint car racing after Greg's passing? You know, at first I thought I'll still go back to the races. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's really become a part of my life. Really, yeah. I mean, I was there every weekend. You know, it was really a part of my life and. My friends were there, and it kind of seemed like all of the people that I got to know, or all the people that I knew before I met Greg, yeah, all kind of uh, kind of went by the wayside a little bit because okay. we were at a racetrack, yeah. you know, and that wasn't their deal. So everybody that yeah. we associated with was there. So it was really tough for me because all of my friends were there, yet it was so hard for me to be there. Yes. So for the first year, I went a lot because course we were selling t-shirts yeah an incredible amount of support yeah. with people buying t-shirts yeah. that was crazy and then the second year that was that was kind of hard you know when I did go that was really really hard to be there this year I've probably been to four races and I find that it's a little easier to go okay but it took me that took me a little while you know the first the first time that I went back I think the following year, I remember leaving Port Royal and pretty much crying the whole way home. Yeah. You know, that was, um, you know, that was, it was hard being there. You know, I got to see a lot of people that I missed and, but then that, that ride home, you know, without, without, without Greg being there, that was a, that was pretty tough. Yeah. It was pretty tough, but, um. But it's getting a little bit easier, you know. Like I said, this year was this year was a lot, a lot better. I hope so. Um, so it's such a, a jagged edge sword, you know, because oh, yeah. it's his whole life. And people could say, I would much rather that they that happens to them in our world than it does on the road outside your salon here and all those sort of things. But that's not a not not a good way to look at it, is it? I mean, no. No, you know, the only thing I think that you can do is find whatever good in it, even though there is no good. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, none of us are getting out alive, right? I mean, none of us are surviving. So uh, the only thing that I guess I'm grateful for is that, you know, he didn't die of cancer. I didn't have to watch him suffer. I didn't, you know, he was, Greg was doing what he loved. You know, uh, I, I do think that he was starting to wind down a little bit. And mm-hmm. I think he was kind of looking forward to maybe, yeah. you know, not racing quite so much and maybe spending a little more time doing some of the fun things in life. But um, I don't know. You know, I mean, that's that's all you really can do. You know, all you can do is look at the the parts that maybe make it a little bit easier to deal with, mm-hmm. you know. And, um, you know, this, this last, uh, on the 20th, the day, his anniversary of, of his death, you know, somebody had said to me, you know, Sherry, um, today you have a choice. You can either remember what you had with Greg or you can remember what happened to Greg. And, you know, that was, um, that was pretty profound. You know, and I just think that, I mean, that's, that's all you can do, you know, that's all you can do. I wanted to remind you how important you are in our world. Greg Hodnett was part of the Hodnett. So I I wanted to come here and remind you that we love you too. And that, um, you know, particularly at this time of the year, but always, you know, you, you might be a hairdresser with a nice ass but <laughs> to us you know you're you're a huge part of our family as well so I just want to remind you that we love you well I really I really really appreciate that you know a lot of times um you know I was just kind of the behind the scenes you know I just kind of followed Greg around and you know I didn't really I mean I had my friends but you know I I, I kind of felt like I was involved in it because I was where Greg was at, yeah. you know, but now I do feel like 
people kind of turn to me a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I so wish it was the other way around. You know, I'd still just like to be the one that just kind of is in the background. And But I really, really do appreciate everybody and all of the support that they give me, you know, all the time. I mean, like I said, you know, just on social media, you know, when somebody remembers Greg, when I'm at a race and somebody comes up and tells me stories and, you know, they tell me how much he's missed. I mean, those things, they, that means a lot to me. And it means a lot to me that, you know, everybody is still okay with seeing me and, and still loves me. I think that's great. 